I carried the body from the secret passages through the secret passage into the cellar. What? I heard them accuse you of the crime. They'll never find the secret passage. They'll never find the body. What did you do that for, you damned fool? <sighs> what do you make of this, Cargan? <laughs> the damn place is haunted! She must have escaped by the window. How could a dead woman escape from a window? Besides, the windows are closed. Say, what are you people trying to do? String me? You know I was born and brought up in New York City, even if I do live here in Asquan Falls. God, going insane. Say, what the devil is this all about? If you people think you can make a joke out of me, you're mistaken. I won't stand for it. Now, what's the answer? She was in that room ten minutes ago, Chief. I'll take a solemn oath on that. It's no joke, Chief. There's been a murder committed here tonight. Then where's the victim? In the cellar! What? what? In the cellar? In the cellar. If I remember rightly, that's where the body was placed after the murder. Then you lie. You saw us carry her. You saw us carry her not ten minutes ago. Of course you did. Say, what are you trying to do? Trap me in the cellar? I tell you, Chief, that's where the body was placed. In the cellar. You can see for yourself. And then we'll see if I'm as crazy as these men claim me to be. Or perhaps... They're going a little mad themselves. I'll get at the bottom of this thing pretty quick. Now, search the cellar of this place. Every nook and corner. And don't leave a thing unturned. Understand? Hurry up then. If this thing turns out to be a practical joke, you'll all end in jail for it. I won't stand to be made the laughing stock of Asquan Falls. I'll tell you that right now. Hello, who's this? Miss Norton. I'll take that key, please. What are the police doing here? Everything's all right. Who is this woman? She claims to be a newspaper reporter. She's the thief. She's the one who sold a package of money. Whose money? My, My money. No. My money. It's bribe money, Chief. Where is the money? Uh, I lost it. What? What the hell are you people trying to do to me anyway? Where did you lose it? I don't know. Somewhere between here and Ascalon. I searched all the way up and down the mountain. It's gone, I'm afraid. Where's Mrs. Rhodes? She became too hysterical, so I left her at the commercial house and asked one. How much money was it? $200,000. Come on, cut out the kidding stuff. How much was it? Nope. That's the exact amount the package contained, Chief. $200,000. Where did you get this money? I gave it to her. And where did you get it? From Mayor Cargan. And where did you get the money, Cargan? He got it from the safe. How'd you open the safe, Cargan? I didn't open the safe. Then who did? Peter's the hermit. Who put the money in the safe? Ah, uh, Bland. The man over here to my left. And where do you get the money, Bland? Mr. Hayden. Is this true, Mr. Hayden? I declined to answer for fear of incriminating myself. <laughs> what do you know about this, Max? Don't ask me. My brain's on fire. I'm going mad. So, Hayden gave the money to Bland. Bland put the money in the safe. Peters opened the safe. Coggin took the money from Peters. This young fellow took the money from Coggin and gave it to the newspaper reporter. Then a woman was killed and the body got up and walked. Away. <laughs> and you people expect me to believe this bump, do you? What does he mean a woman's been killed? Everything's all right. I can explain. Come on, come on, go on, get in there. It's all you find in the cellar, Chief. No dead bodies or packages of money? Nothing else, Chief. Oh, it's you, is it, Peters? So that's where you hide, huh? The cellar of Baldpate? 
Well, you'll have a nice room in the county jail tomorrow morning. Damn the police, I hate them. Go on, get over there. Go go to the outside. Question anyone who comes up or down the mountain. Understand? Sure thing, Chief. Now, if you excuse me, miss, you'll have to step upstairs. I have a lot to say to these young fellows, and I'm not particular about my language when I'm on a case, so step upstairs. Wait, I don't believe this woman lost the money at all, Chief. Then I'll get the matron of the jail up here and have her searched. If she has anything on her, we'll get it. Go in one of those rooms till I call you. Who is the woman she claims to have left at the hotel? Mrs. Rhodes. She's all right, Chief. How do we know? Maybe they're working together. That's enough, Bland. I'll call up the commercial house and see if she's there. <sighs> Hello? Give me 35 Central quick. Well, ring me when you get it. What was her name again? Mrs. Rhodes. <laughs> what is it? She can kill! Who? What did you do? Put her back in that room! <laughs> Isn't that what you wanted me to do? <laughs> no, you blithering idiot! Who did this? Tell me what happened. I can explain. Everything's all right. Say, what the hell are you people trying to do to me anyway? Go on, get over there where you belong. <laughs> no one touched that phone. I'll get it. Some haunted us is all a joke on me. I'll soon find out. Hello? Yes, I called you. See, so listen, Charlie. This is Chief Kennedy. Is there a woman there by the name of Vogue? She was. She did, huh? How long ago? I see. What's that? She asked you to mind the package for her till she got back? Huh. Where have you got it? In the safe. Say, listen, Charlie. Call headquarters and get a man over there. Give him that package and tell him to bring it up to Ball Payton as quick as he can. Understand? Never mind, you do what they tell you. And listen. Tell them to go out the garage and the depot and put all strangers under a vest, men and women. I know what I'm doing, Charlie. You take orders from me and listen. Get the covenant on the telephone and have him to come up to Ball Payton in a rush. This is a case for him. Don't lose any time now. Keep your mouth shut and get busy. Well, she left the hotel a quarter of an hour ago and put the package in the hotel safe before she went. And someone kills a woman and the body disappears and then comes back. Now that's some pretty good stuff, guys. How do you account for this? She must have stolen the money from me when we were going down the mountain. Huh. Hey, I think they've got somebody. Hey, what is it? A woman. I'll bring her in. Here comes a bird, I guess, that tried to fly away with the coin. What is the meaning of this? That's what I'm trying to find out! Is there any trace of the money? Wait, aren't you gonna have these women searched, Chief? Maybe it won't be necessary. We'll wait and see what's in that package she left at the commercial house. Oh, no you don't. No one leaves this place until this, this whole thing is cleared up and I find out who killed that woman. Killed a woman? What does he mean? <laughs> you stole the money from me, didn't you? I'll never trust another woman as long as I live. <laughs> They're no good. They never were. Shut <laughs> up! What do you have to say to this, missus? Yes, I did steal the money. But I did it for you, Jim Cargan. I knew if the story was ever found out, you'd be a ruined man. I knew if the package of money was the evidence would convict you. I stole the money intended to turn to Mr. Hayden to kill off the bribe. I did all of this because I thought you cared. And what is my reward? You stand there, ready to turn against me, to condemn me. Well, now I'll turn. Officer, these men have barked with you the city of Rudin. I demand their immediate arrest on the charge of conspiracy. That is a lie. It's the truth, Chief. The absolute truth. 
This young woman and I will testify against these men under the charge of conspiracy and murder. Murder? What do you have to say to this, Coggin? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. I'm through. So am I. I can't stand this any longer. I'm going mad. It was I who killed that woman upstairs. I shot her down like a dog. I know I don't stand a chance to court a law, but please, don't let them take me away. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll, I'll confess. I'll turn to I'll turn to its evidence. I'll, I'll do anything. Just please, I can't go back there again. Not again. Get up! Come on. You have to with these, young fellow. No, no, this, this is what we got here, sir. No. Waste of my time. There we go. Target, what are we gonna do? No less than ten years? On, get over there! Can you ever forgive me? I didn't understand before, but I do now. And you came here to write a book, huh? Well, that was the original idea. No, I still don't know whether or not you people are kidding me. They've got somebody. Well, what now? Tell the messenger to hurry back and tell the COVID to hurry up. Say, before we open this thing, I want to tell you all something. If this turns out to be a package of cigar coupons, I'm going to smash somebody short. I won't stand to be short, even if I am just a small town cop. <laughs> Great Scott, it's the real thing, isn't it? How much did you say was here? Two hundred thousand dollars. I'll take that money if you don't mind, Chief. No, it belongs to me. You better hold on to that money, Chief. It's the only proof of conspiracy we've got. Go on, get away. You need to tell me what to do. I know my business. Hello? Give me 13 Central, quick. Hello, Jane? This is Chief Kennedy. I want to talk to my wife. Hello, hello, Betty. Listen, Betty, get this clear. Get some things together and get the children ready and take that five o'clock train that goes to New York. <laughs> huh? Listen, when you get there, look up the railroads and go on the first and quickest train that goes to Montreal. Montreal. I'll be there waiting for you Thursday morning. What? Don't ask a lot of questions. What are we gonna do there? We're gonna live there. What? Hold on. All right. Hey, uh, how, do, how do you spell Montreal? <laughs> Listen, when you get there, just go to Canada. Any part of it, I'll find you. What? Never mind the furniture. We're gonna live in a palace. Canada, that's all. All right, you didn't tell you. Bye, love you. What do you intend to do? You heard me, didn't you? I'm going to Canada! Canada? I hope to God you freeze to death. You mean you're going to steal that money? Why shouldn't I take it from a gang of crooks like this? It's one chance in a lifetime to get this much money. You don't suppose I'm gonna pass it out when I got you right here for my cake, do you? Not me. I don't have one hell of a time for the rest of my life. And send my two boys to college. You don't honestly think that we're you sit here and get away with it, do you? Oh, that's just what you're going to do. And I'm going to have my men keep you here all night until I get a damn good start. I've got him! Get the money! I've got it! I've got it! You let go of me! Do you hear? Let go! Give me that money! No, you don't, Cargan. That's my money! Don't let them get it, Peters! Let them try to get it. Now let me see them get it. Watch the rotten stuff burn. What have you done? He's 
burned the money. A fortune. Good God. I'm going to have my men here to draw it down like a pack of hounds. Look, look. Okay. <laughs> A ghost, a real ghost. See, she isn't that. I go, I didn't mean to kill her. <laughs> Let me out of this place. It's a graveyard. The seventh key. The seventh key? Who are you? I'm the owner of Volpate Inn. Two policemen refused to allow me to pass, so I shot them dead. What? what? <laughs> no, 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 this isn't true. This can't be true. I'm a raving maniac. I've just arrived, Billy. Motored here from New York. I expected to find you alone. Who are these people? And how did they get in here? Have they disturbed you in your work? And how is that story coming along? How? How's it coming along? Great heavens, man! To what sort of place have you sent me to? Nothing but crooks! Women, thieves, ghosts, dead people walking around the halls. Thousands of dollars and keys and keys and keys and keys and keys. The bet's off. You win, I lose. 24 hours. Why? I couldn't write a novel in 24 years in a place like this. My God! What a night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold you to the wager, Billy. I just wanted to let you know, it isn't real. What isn't real? I'm not a real widow. I'm not a real politician. I'm not a real policeman. This is a really gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually a really nice guy. That wasn't real money that was burned. <laughs> These aren't real handcuffs. <laughs> See? <laughs> Are you real? Well, that's for him to say. What? <laughs> well, great heavens, man. Don't keep me in the dark. Tell me what it all means. It means, old boy, that I wanted to prove to you just how awful it would be if those stories of yours actually came true. I left New York an hour ahead of you. Got to Rudin at 9 o'clock. Went directly over to the Empire Theater, told the manager of our bet, framed a plan, engaged the entire stock company, hired half a dozen autos, and came directly here to Asquan. We got to the top of the mountain at exactly 12 o'clock. Since then, you know what's been happening. I've been watching the proceedings from the outside, and if it weren't for the fact that I'm nearly frozen stiff, I'd call it a wonderful night. <laughs> <laughs> You did this to me? You're not mad, are you? Of course, if you want to... Uh, I'm not holding true to any wager. Bet's off. Me for the commercial house until I get the train. Now, is your real name Mary? Yes. Well, Mary, the shots in the night, the chases after fortunes, and all the rest of the melodrama may be all wrong, but will you help me at least prove to this man that there really is such a thing as love at first sight? Well, how can I do that? Well, don't you know? Well, you don't want me to say it, do you? Remember your promise, Mary.
Come right in, folks. You're just in time. We've been outside 10 minutes waiting for the clock to strike. Lord, I didn't think we'd find it here alive. The only difference between me and a real live one is that I'm hungry. And half dead. How'd you come out? Did you finish your book? Allow me. What do you think of that, Mother? He wrote a book with words. <laughs> Yep, finished just in time. Got work done a couple minutes ago. Were you disturbed at all? Never heard a sound. No ghosts? Nary a ghost, Mrs. Quimby. Except for those concealed within the manuscript paper. What's he mean, lies? How do I know? <sighs> you know, there have been some wild and woolly occurrences reenacted in this story since you've left. What happened? Oh, nothing real. Only in the manuscript paper. What's he mean, lies? How do I know? Huh, that must be Mr. Bentley. Will but I talk to him? Of course, that's the idea, isn't it? Well, yes. Yeah. Hello? Yes, hello, Mr. Bentley. Yes, sir. I've got it right here. Two minutes ago, sir. Wait a minute, I have to find that out. What's the name of the story? It's type written on the cover. Seven keys to bald paint. Seven keys to bald paint. He's laughing. He says there's only one. <laughs> yes, sir. What? Wait, I'll ask. Do you want to talk to him? Um, no. Uh, yes, but just a minute. Hello? Hello, Hal. I'll be collecting that $5,000 from you, old pal. <laughs> Say, it's some title, isn't it? And some story, too. Horrible, terrible, awful melodrama. The kind of stuff you always roast me about. But, treat it as a joke, however, this time. Oh, say, Hal, you're in the story. Oh, no, I didn't mention you by name or anything. Oh, and say, I'm in it too. Oh, me? I'm the hero. Say, how? This thing's going to sell a million copies. The what? I don't give a damn what the critics say. It's what the public wants. All right, I'll meet you at 2.30 at the 44th Street Club. <laughs> 